Happy birthday. It's your birthday. Happy, happy birthday to you. Christine's only going to do that for 45 minutes, and then we will get into our stories. <laughs> <laughs> well, what about Vine? You're not going to sing for me for 45 I'll minutes? tell you the one that my mom always does. Um, okay. It's uh, maybe other people have heard it. I, she's the only person I've heard it from. But it when she, when she is long gone, this will still be the song that haunts my nightmares every birthday. Ready? Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> Kings and queens and princes too want to wish the best to you. So what do you say? What do you say? What do you say? Happy birthday to you. Oh, no. no. I know. It's so much. It sounds like I'm at a... Like at a, at an outdoor restaurant and waiters are singing to me, and it already gives me so much anxiety. It sounds like everyone's in costume. I can't deal with it. Actually, <laughs> my mother has been in many a costume while singing this to me. Also, <laughs> just to be clear, but kings happy and queens and what princes too? Not the princesses. No, princesses. They know better. They know better. They're, they're upstairs. Like, I am not at the Chuck E. Cheese. They're they're on Twitter upstairs. They <laughs> they haven't come downstairs to greet the family yet. So uh, anyway, anyway, happy ha- birthday. Um, happy three zero. Thank you. I uh, I feel pretty pretty old now, and I can't even drink. So it's as kind you of... should. <laughs> but next year, I think I'm gonna do a a a redo, like like a like a thirtieth do over. Since this year, I don't really get to party. You it's know? gonna rain on my parade. I get it. That's fine. Excuse we... me. Okay, I don't get a parade. Okay, because it's my thirtieth. No, you have a little baby who's gonna parade right out of you in a couple. I know. Months. Parade into my kidneys, <laughs> but that's about it. Okay, so I want to do. I want to have a, a birthday party for my thirtieth. I don't think it's gonna happen. So next year, if you're promising me next year for your birthday, which will be the same weekend as my birthday, that there's a reason to celebrate, then that's good enough for me. As okay, long you as told I can... me you have a thing with Linda and princesses and kings and whatever. So I, which I you're coming you to, already have plans. To be clear, like you, I've already demanded that you attend. Remember? Okay, but nobody's coming here for me so i'm just saying i'm gonna have to do a redo i will yes i i've asked you a million times don't say that if you don't mean it what don't tell me about? You, i've never been invited to your 31st birthday party to be no, clear this year i said nobody's here for my 30th so i gotta i gotta plan ahead for next year re- do a redo what double. are you what are you doing for your birthday nothing that's what i'm trying to tell you i don't have any plans oh. nobody's here i'm kind of just chilling i just had a baby shower like a week or two ago so i'm just kind of like chilling I feel like wouldn't blaze i feel like blaze will surprise you with something i mean I we wrong? might go to dinner but i don't think like there's not really anybody partying right now very much mm. like i mean like my mom's here <laughs> that's about it i see one of the things that i'm really grateful for is when i started dating allison i really reamed it into her head that like we can't have a birthday together that doesn't go are you having a big party crazy because i haven't been invited so i don't know what what the plan is all i know is that i've been told every weekend of june i'm booked oh so apparently she's got a bunch of things planned but i don't know what they are okay well i'm excited to hear it but for me now... too i'm also terrified <laughs> <laughs> we, we remember the desert surprise lest we forget so uh, i remember i don't know if you've ever let me talk about it on the sh- show but nope. i remember very clearly um, no comment let's just say maybe you're celebrating your 31st alone next year if i don't make it out of this one so <laughs> okay well we'll see we'll see anyway that's that's enough about us not really but welcome <laughs> to our birthday episode it's june um i think this is actually my month to go first because you went first last month right sure that checks Yay. out you're also turning okay. 30 so you know we should respect the elderly yeah and exactly i see go you're gonna it. give me so much shit this year that like i figure i might as well just be kind to myself and plan a party for next year you see, I see i'll I see, do it I see. in a different week i'll do it like i don't know end of june you can have the whole month to yourself next year and then i'll just do like one day at the end so i don't rain on your parade you can have all of June and I'll just make July like a second <laughs> chance at it all. A redemption second month. Chance. Redemption month. Oh, okay. We're all taking right. over. Happy Gemini season. All right. Take it away. This email was sent in by Hannah. Use she, her pronouns. Thank you, Hannah. The subject is birthday gift goose cam. Hmm. Um, Eva also said there was a nice theme of people sending in stories for our birthdays, which is so sweet. Nice. So I know. This is the subject. It says... Oh, it's not a subject. That was a subject. Hi, Eva, M, Christine, and all furry animals as well as petrified fruit. I know that it is your birthday month, so I'm hoping to give the gift of goose cam. (laughs) That's so sweet. (laughs) 
My name is Hannah, and I want to tell you some of my most noteworthy, spooky things that have happened to me in my life. I've been wanting to send in these stories for a while, but every time I went to type them out, weird things started happening in my apartment. Uh But I'm happy I'm finally getting to it. So let's crack into it. Okay. So to set up the first story, I grew up on a farm that had three houses on it. Mine, my great-grandpa's, and the family farmhouse that nobody lived in. One day when I was about six, I left my house and went to go take care of some animals on the farm. When I was walking across the barn lot, I saw a man looking into a birdhouse that was over by the old farmhouse. I thought it was strange, but my dad, who's a farmer, always had people out working on equipment, so I just assumed that's what it was. I went into the barn, took care of the animals, and when I came back out, the man was still over by the birdhouse. So I waved, and he waved back. When he did, I noticed that his thumb was missing. I brushed it off and went back to my house. Shortly after, my grandpa came and picked me up, and I asked... Oh, sorry. My grandma came and picked me up, and I asked her who was working on equipment for my dad. She drove out there and nobody was there. A couple months later, I was looking through pictures with my mom and I came across the man in a photo. I asked my mom who it was and she told me it was my great uncle who died in the old farmhouse about a month after I was born. Ooh, I, uh, okay, I'm I'm digging it. I'm digging it so far. (laughs) I asked if he was missing his thumb and my mom looked at me with confusion and replied, yes. Come to find out, he had lost his thumb in a farming accident and buried it in a box somewhere on the farm. (laughs) So wait a minute. So the thumb is haunting the barn. (laughs) (laughs) The haunted thumb. The haunted uh, little digit, as you will. (laughs) Don't ask me why. All I have to say is yikes. My great uncle still hangs around the farm and specifically likes to spook us in our home. My second story happened in college. My grandmother, the person I was closest to in my family, passed away unexpectedly in her sleep on vacation during my freshman year. A few months later, I had a dream that she came to talk to me. She passed away the day after my birthday, but since I was a freshman in college, I was already out partying when she called, and I never answered or returned her phone call. Oh. Mm. I always had so much regret not talking to her. In this dream, she told me she was happy I was living my life and was not mad I didn't answer her that night. A bunch of other things were said between us, and shortly after, she told me she needed to go help one of her friends. I asked what she was talking about, and she told me she had to help a friend pass on. The next day, my mom called and told me that my grandmother's best friend had died early in the morning that day. Oh, my God. Let's just say I couldn't keep myself together for like a week. Well, (laughs) I can't keep myself together right now. I'm just telling my story. (laughs) My final story happened the last time I tried to type these other two stories out. Oh, God. Okay, well, type quickly, girl. (laughs) I know. I was like, I'm glad it's it's here. I feel like you've proven that you're okay. (laughs) I was sitting in my apartment typing these out. Shortly after starting to type, my dog started barking and growling at my laundry closet. I thought it was weird, but she has severe small dog complex. So I just assumed she was getting mad about someone being in the hallway of my apartment building. Next thing I know, she yelps and goes sliding into my bedroom like something pushed her. <gasps> she, that's awful. Okay. Oh, my god. She came running back to me and was shaking. So I stopped typing. A few days later, I woke up to a large bang. When I got up and opened my bedroom door, the baking sheets that I had stacked, kind of like nesting dolls, the largest on the bottom and decreasing in size to the top one, on top of my fridge were on the ground in a single Ugh. file line in a trail all the way back to my bedroom. <laughs> No. I hope you took a photo of that just like for your own sanity to like I hope you're lying. I hope that no, the story isn't true. I hope you're full of shit. Wow, I have such an actual goose cam right you now. You gave us the gift of goose cam. Oh, <sighs> thank you. Gift. I it's a gift I'd like to return. Um I I'll hope, take M's. I hope it wasn't on clearance. <laughs> Oh, no returns. All right. Uh, They were in a single file. That's horrible. They were in a single file line in a trail all the way to my bedroom. If they just would have fallen off, they should have A, been just next to the fridge, and B, been kind of stacked still. Don't worry. I had the apartment cleansed and moved shortly after. Thank you for reading. I apologize for saying so many stories, but I hope I gave you Goose Kim with at least one. If you have any questions or would like a picture of my dog, feel free to reach out to my email. <laughs> what, a, what a nice little extra added sentence there. Thank you. I love that because most people are like, here's 85 pictures of my dog. And she's I like, like, I like how know. this person was like, do you need emotional support after that? Here's my dog. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I want to see pictures of the baking sheets and uh, you're not <laughs> offering that. Also, look, here's Junie. This is why I'm sitting up by it right now, by the way. Oh, um, kitty cat. He took the entire little sofa, so I have to, I can't lounge today. Checks out. 
Junie seems like the alpha of the group. Oh, that's entirely true, yes. Uh, yikes. Well, I'm sorry that happened to you, but also I'm glad it didn't happen to me. So let's just... <laughs> so let's, let's keep it on your side of things. Let's yeah. just move on quickly. Best Fiends is way more fun than any other matching puzzle games. You know, the ones where all you do is smash candy over and over. But Never heard of it. <laughs> well... <laughs> I feel like maybe you have it because, Christine, you are like actually, the yeah. champion of Best Fiends. All you... I do is play Best Fiends, so I actually haven't heard of any other game. Um, I used to play other games. They've all gone to the cell phone graveyard where now <laughs> I just play Best Fiends over and over again. It's so uh, – I'm just obsessed with it, really. I can't stop playing. And uh, now that that's a problem, uh, since Best Fiends has literally thousands of fun puzzles to solve, and you're already on level a billion, I'm sure. <laughs> and there's still plenty more to go. So with Best Fiends, there's something new to play every day, and the adorable collectible characters just keep coming. Maybe you're like me and you have some doubts about finding a puzzle game with more to offer, but no, no, you don't have to doubt because – I am telling you right now what you should play. My advice is to give Best Fiends a try. Just do not blame me if you cannot put it down and that's all you want to do because that's probably what's going to happen. Download the five-star rated puzzle game Best Fiends free today on the App Store or Google Play. That's friends without the R, Best Fiends. Christine, can I tell you about what I had for dinner? Only if you say hello first. Hello. Fresh. <laughs> What okay. do you have for dinner? <laughs> <laughs> I had okay. I've talked about it a bunch of times whenever we talked about Hello Fresh, but their pineapple pork tacos are back. Oh. Um, so let's just say I had a party in my mouth, party for one last night, and it was the best. <laughs> it should have been party for two, but I didn't give any to Allison. So no, no. Sometimes you need that double meal. Um, I'm preparing to do that tonight, so don't worry. I'm with you. Hello Fresh cuts out stressful meal planning and grocery store trips, so you can enjoy cooking and get dinner on the table in just about 30 minutes. Uh, they offer 27 plus recipes to choose from each week i think my favorite activity each week is picking what recipes i'd like to have sent my way Mm -hmm. that week um and i get the vegetarian ones and there's still so many to choose from and they're all delicious i've never had something from hellfresh that i don't like uh and they offer flexibility so if you want to customize your order on the app you can do that really easily if you want to change your delivery day or your food preferences um you can customize your order it's super super easy go to hellofresh.com slash drink 12 and use code drink 12 for 12 free meals including free shipping that's hellofresh.com slash drink 12 and use code drink 12 for 12 free meals including free shipping uh this is from beep uh i don't see pronouns anywhere this was beep a big beep that's what we're gonna call you um beep story is titled unabomber cabin (gasps) stories oh yeah Eva also said that some of them were related to our recent topics Mm. I've been seeing, I feel like some synchronicities have popped up. And since you've mentioned the Unabomber, I've seen and heard about the Unabomber like 10 times. Oh, no. Really weird. Anyway. That's not um, a good thing to have synchronicity about. No, you're correct. (laughs) It's something I have now been very on edge over and I don't know why. Okay. (laughs) Beep says hello and that's why we drink folks i finished uh i finished listening to your story about the unabomber and had sudden flashbacks about when i used to work at the museum and <gasps> i we love had... the museum sorry it's like my favorite place i paused thinking something might, might be said <laughs> might come out of my face yes it did very loudly <laughs> i apologize and we had his actual real life cabin on display <gasps> whoa well i missed that Jeez. That is an exhibit I would have liked to see. Yeah, that exhibit was not on display when I was there. Uh, if you, I don't know if you all visited the museum when you lived in the area, but in my opinion, it was one of the best museums in D.C. It Unfortunately, was. it closed a couple years ago, right when we most needed a museum about the mm-hmm. free press and the First Amendment, but I digress. The I think I donated like $15 and they were like, this will not. You can. This will not. Thank keep you, us a open. hero. <laughs> I was like, I'm already. I'm still paying my journalism debt back to my college. Okay, I have fifteen dollars to my name. Uh, the cabin was super bare bones, just a couple shelves built into one of the walls, an open door, and like one window. Uh, there was a very disgusting, long, dark stain across one wall, which I found out was where his bed used to be. <gasps> oh my god. He bathed so little and was so dirty that his body created a permanent black stain on the wall he slept against. No, 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 no. I wasn't working there at the time that the cabin was brought in, but some of my more seasoned co-workers told me that you could still smell the body odor if you stuck your head inside. Oh my gosh. That is such an employee story, though. Like, stick your head in the Unabomber bed. (laughs) 
And <laughs> you won't. You won't. You also, won't. <laughs> but also, like, that's so haunting in a different way. Yes. Because it's kind of, I always forget what that, like, I don't know if it's really a psychological effect or a theory. I don't know what it's called. But the the question of, like, would you wear a murderer shirt? And it's like, would you wear it? Because it's just a shirt, but like you've associated it with so much bad energy. Yeah. It's like to have, it's almost like a ghost haunting, but it's a real person. It's like you can just smell. Which is almost worse. Like, do you want to go into this space and actually breathe in their body smell, which is still etched into this building? That's horrifying. Well, and that reminds me, well, it reminds me, A, of stone tape theory of like the energy like stays maybe that's what i'm thinking of yeah i think we've talked about that like briefly but yeah it's like the idea that like i learned it from zach so fun fact (laughs) but uh, he told me it means that when uh that like physical objects like retain energy that's been so that makes Mm. sense yeah like that a murder Ugh. well and if you think about his museum like the whole yeah uh, the whole like idea that all these things are gathered under one roof and ugh. I'll I have I have something to add to this after I finish the story, but we're about to get way too far into a tangent. I don't want to be disrespectful oh, okay, to somebody's okay. story. But hang on a second, because I'm with you. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, you could smell the Ugh, body odor still horrible. Inside. The museum would also host frequent after hours events where the guests were pretty much free to roam the museum with very little supervision. And these events almost always involved copious amounts of alcohol and the cabin was in an exhibit tucked away in the back corner. So it allowed for a very good amount of privacy and shenanigans. Oh, no. Uh, There were stories on more than one occasion of guests getting caught having sex inside the cabin, (gasps) as well as at least one account of literal human poop found inside the cabin the next morning. Oh my god. Ooh, I feel like desecrating an already bad energy space is like not good for you. It's probably not healthy for you. No, no, no. It's also a biohazard apparently. It's um, also really gross. <laughs> <laughs> who knows what else went on in there that just never got reported or people didn't get caught, but visitor service is a true nightmare profession. Uh so later on they also added a virtual reality experience where you could control the bomb squad robot to search the cabin and you could pick up and examine evidence that they what? found during the search. That is so badass. Yeah, I've never even seen that. Damn. Anyways, none of this is actually true crime, but I thought you might get a kick out of it. I thought she was the- going to say none of or they were going to say I <laughs> none of this is true. None of this is true. I was like you <laughs> are a little sneaky bastard. Anyways, none of this is actually true crime, but I thought you might get a kick out of some of the behind the scenes hot goss. You know I love a good hot oh, goss. Oh yeah. I doubt anyone would care that I'm sharing this because the museum is closed now and none of it is a secret, but just in case, I'd rather go anonymous if you ever decide to read it. Oh, so we literally just gave their name? Every time we said their name, can we just do a Oh, for God's sake. That is a real pain in Premiere, Em. I'm so sorry. Eva put in the thing, I think, that somebody was anonymous. Oh, yep. This a heads up. Second story would like to remain anonymous. (laughs) Wow, and I just went this whole time and oh, said... Oh, Emothy. Okay, well, I'll just figure I'm it so out. I'm so sorry. Oh, I'll my fi- God. I'll figure it out. I mean, I don't... I know how to do it on that audacity. Maybe I can just blur or put a block over our mouths or something. I don't know. Okay. I'll figure it out. It does end with have a balloon tunes day, and it sounds like you're about to have a balloon tunes experience <laughs> editing this story. I, was, I, I jinxed myself because I was sitting here going, this is so... I love editing listeners episodes because like, I don't really need to edit anything. They're just like... Except for, except for big beep. <laughs> Stop saying it. I'm going to have Sorry. to change it. Um, okay. So <laughs> the thing I was going to talk about, though, is that um, the would you wear uh-huh. a murderer shirt, even though it's just a shirt and like realistically has nothing right. bad affiliated with it. Um, so I was going to wait until we had our normal episode. I can just only bring it up <gasps> briefly right now, but I went to the Lizzie Borden yeah. house recently. And that was the weirdest experience because I was literally sleeping in a murderer's house. And it was like, yeah, it was just a grander s- scope of like, would you wear a murderer shirt? It was like, yeah. would you sleep in a murderer's house? And like, it, the weird part too was that like, it was an overnight stay where they gave us no fucking supervision to be clear. Like we could, <gasps> let's just put it this way. And part of me, the only reason I didn't do it is because of karma and it would have come back and bit me in the ass. That's the only reason I did not do this. Like- it, it was totally against my morals, all of this. I was like, I don't care. I'm going to do it. We found a newspaper down there that was not framed. It was not being preserved. It wasn't in plastic or a Ziploc or anything. It was just lying out, like, 
And like you could have just taken it if you wanted to, but it was, I'm pretty sure, the newspaper that came to Lizzie Bourne's house about her own murder. Shut like, the fuck it, up. It was from I took pictures that I'll send you, but it's literally the one from 1892, and it was <gasps> probably the one that sh- that came to her house and she was reading about her own murder in the paper. <gasps> and it was just like folded up and just like left on a table and no one it, there were so many articles and pieces of paper and documents like that where i was like i could literally just put this in my fucking backpack and walk away with it and like have something that should be in a museum oh my god but it was so weird that i was like holding a newspaper where i have convinced myself i'm like lizzie borden's hands have also touched this and like right after like 24 hours after she had killed people and it, it was just in my hands and I was just in my pajamas barefoot. Like I was just you, walking like, around. like FaceTiming me. Yeah. <laughs> I was trying to FaceTime Christine because I was like, you need to look at. It was just so weird because in a place where it should have absolutely been roped off, everything should have been behind glass. You shouldn't be able to interact with it. I was literally just flipping through an old newspaper in my pajamas. And like they even told us if you want to sleep on the couch where like Lizzie Borden's dad was murdered. <gasps> oh, you can do no. That. And I was like, first of all, that I didn't do. But yeah. I was like, the fact that I was just walking around in the house alone because everyone else had gone to bed that was on the store. I was totally by myself. I was like, if I wanted to, I could just like take a nap on the couch where he died How and weird. read his newspaper. It was such a wild feeling. So How trippy I just wanted, that? I don't know what this turned into. I think I just wanted to talk about it. Well, no, I but it's yet, the same but... idea. And I wonder, I mean, we know where Lizzie Borden's has. I wonder what they did with the Ted Kaczynski cabin once it left the museum. Like, I wonder. If, yeah, where to go? I feel like Zach should have it. <laughs> Right, right? I feel like, like he, I feel like that's the only sensible. Sounds option. like he could have. Sounds like he could have also taken that away, slat by slat, and no one would have known. Yeah, I was <laughs> so. gonna say you're right. He probably could have gotten it for free. Yeah. Um. Wow. Um. Wow. That's anyway, just really wild stuff. I did also hear from the people who work there. I'll. We have to talk about this on the yeah we will. Uh, Sunday episode too. But I just just to give you a little taste of the experience <gasps> uh-huh. on the tour. Uh, she, the, the tour guide, she was like, oh yeah, I was the tour guide that was also, if you ever watched the episode, I was the one that led Zach Bagans through here. <gasps> and I was like, oh my God. And then without being, I, all I said was, I would like to know more about that. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. And, uh, she did say, she was like, well, the episode may look like they were a lot braver than they were, but before 2 a.m., <laughs> all of them had ran out of the basement and never came back. So, fun fact for you. Oh, my goodness. Hot goss indeed. And apparently the people who have the Lizzie Borden house right now are about to switch hands. So by the time this comes out, if, like, I mean, she's not going to get fired because I said information. Like, she's already, they're already losing their job. So (laughs) I just say whatever I want. (laughs) It's too late for her. It's too late. Uh, Also, I will talk more about that in the next episode, too. There's a lot to cover. But I wanted to just say, like, in terms of going into, like, a cabin and smelling the body odor, it was, like... (gasps) It reminded me of going down uh, in their basement where she hid the the murder weapon, yep, by the yep, way. Yep, 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 yep. And I was just sitting literally right by the little bricks where she like stuffed the hatchet into and just reading the newspaper she probably got at the house. And How horrific. It was really a, does, an odd experience. Does Eva know you went there? Or is she sitting over there going, th- wait, what? <laughs> I think she knows. Okay. I haven't talked about it with her, but I I think, Eva, if you don't know, here, here <laughs> it is. <laughs> I mean, I only knew because you texted me about it. Oh, my oh, gosh. Hmm. I don't know. I did well, post about it on Instagram for a hot second, like just one picture. You so. did? Oh, I, I missed did. that, clearly. I think we're not friends on Instagram, Christine. Let's talk I'm literally that. deletes on Instagram every single week. It's driving me up the no, wall. No, I don't. You Okay. You know Look, it's not me. Like, we've talked about this a million it's times. It's also not me. Look, x Teen Schiefer. Look, following... You like just said we're not friends on Instagram. Why would you say that then? No, I'm I, I I'm something's I've noticed for like three weeks now that you're not looking at my stories and I assumed there was a reason. Okay, for that. I thought you just stopped posting stories because that yours always came up first before everybody else. What else's. is going on? I don't know. I wait, what? I, it oh, says no. follow I don't know. Anyway, Am I on we'll like talk your about... hidden list or something? Whatever. I'll you're on my close friends. I don't anyway. <sighs> We'll, we'll story number the, three we'll save this for the birthday episode we'll have this argument on the birthday episode okay story number three this is from carolyn sorry okay okay this is from what it's my turn oh okay sorry you're right what? let me kill that sorry <laughs> i was trying what is wrong with me i don't know man all right uh this is from carolyn it's called the time my parents almost turned in my uncle as the unibomber oh <gasps> what oh my oh gosh my God. <laughs> Okay, Carolyn says, hey, cool cats, kittens, puppies, and the new addition of a new adorable parasite. (laughs) (laughs) 
aka a, a baby. Yeah, a lot of people keep messaging me like, congrats on the fetus. And I'm like, can you stop saying it in the world's creepiest way ever? Thank you. My very personal much. favorite is Hellion and your bellion. That's mm, that's very good. That's very Thank good. You. That was, the, I think, the first time the next day after I found out, I texted you mm-hmm. asking about that. And then you didn't respond to it at all. So I took it as, oh, you didn't like it. So I won't do it again. But in my head, I still call it your little hell. I rebellion. like that all of a sudden your reaction is, you don't like this. I guess I'll stop. As if that has ever stopped any of us in the past. <laughs> this time it's about a baby, though. So I felt like I needed to actually be respectful. I don't remember. I don't know why I didn't respond. Probably because you'd blocked me again on something. Okay. That's got to be it. <laughs> so Carolyn says, let's crack into the noodles all the way to the top story. I'll get into the gushy stuff later. I love I love that. Saving the gushy stuff for last. Thank you. My Uncle B has a genius level IQ. He has multiple doctorates and the kind of detached that is creepy as hell. In fact, he left his family by gathering them in the living room one morning, announcing he no longer wanted to be a husband and father and promptly uh. moving to the trailer in their driveway and pretending none of them existed. Oh. Why wouldn't you go further than the yard? Why would you go somewhere else? <laughs> oh, my God. So when they released the profiled sketch of the Unabomber, which looked too much like B for comfort, my parents were freaked. They were just about to call the FBI to report B as a possible suspect when Ted was caught. Breathing aside, which remember when I was telling that story and his own brother was like, I really hope this is a false alarm. Yeah. So you don't even think about all the people who, for them, it was a false alarm. And they, Ooh. can you imagine finding out that like your brother or somebody was like, Oh, I, I was like, I had the FBI on speed dial. I thought you were him. Sorry. <laughs> that's my bad. Like, that's, that's a late 3 a.m. conversation yeah. once you've bonded again. Years and- <laughs> later. <laughs> Years <Yeah>. later. <laughs> oh, yikes. Okay. Uh, breathing a sigh of relief, they were later discussing the incident with B. I mean, catching a bomber is big news, and B also lived in Montana. Oh, well, that'll add to it as well. Mm-hmm. When B revealed that he knew Ted, holy shit. So they didn't even know he knew Ted. Okay. Wow. This is blowing my mind. He was the friend of a friend and they'd had coffee a few times. Neat. That's what Carolyn says. <laughs> <laughs> I still wait for the day I hear that B is caught as an actual serial killer, but so far, no news. But I will 1000% not be surprised if or when it happens. And I will also write in that story ASAP. Thank you, lovely humans, for all you do. You've helped me through the pandemic and much more, and even turned me on to using BetterHelp after many failed attempts to find the right fit for a therapist. That just gave me a little goose cam, too. I'm so proud of you both for how hard you've worked and how far you've come. Stay safe, stay strong, and stay awesome. Carolyn. Wow. That's so nice. It is nice. I cannot believe about... The first part was terrible, but... (laughs) (laughs) I cannot believe that. I mean, and then to find out, to almost report him and then not even knowing that he had coffee with Ted and then... Just, are you kidding me? Yikes. Yikes. Hmm. I don't like it. Okay, so here's the next story. This is from Jules, who uses she, her pronouns. Thank you for normalizing pronouns. And the subject line is, my grandma was almost a Richard Ramirez victim. Oh, <laughs> I just like almost choked to death. Sorry. So, uh, hey, guys, babes, and non-binary theys. First and foremost, Emothy. I am a Scorpio. So let's get that out of the way. It didn't have to be in the way. I, I didn't know. It's I a didn't Scorpio. Know. They have, it has to be in the context of the story classic scorpio (laughs) inserting yourself into the narrative like that i mean mean, it feels a little like a gemini move and maybe that's why i feel threatened but okay it's because it's gemini season and they knew they knew it they knew what they were Uh doing Uh aha yes this is related to christine's latest two-parter on richard ramirez my mom and i were listening to another podcast episode about uh about richard big rick you know (laughs) and my mom just casually says you know your grandma was almost his last victim right and i screamed what and i called my grandma before i could even finish his name she gasps and says yep that happened so my grandma (laughs) gasped like she forgot oh yeah (laughs) (laughs) she probably went oh yes i remember it i remember it unfortunately too fondly um (laughs) So my grandma was walking with her friends and she was suddenly grabbed from the back and a guy held up a knife to her. Oh my God. Wow. That is terrible already. Of course, she threw in the fact that he smelled horrid. Oh my gosh. They're all smelling really gross in yeah, this they are. episode of And That's Why I Drink. Can you take a lucky guess of who the fuck this was? It was Richard Ramirez. Could he have been Ted, him- to be fair. Yeah, at this point, I'm not too sure. I, I didn't have a clear answer. Or Uncle um, B at this point. Could be Uncle B. <laughs> could be me and Christine. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, who knows? Um, 
he told me not to scream and her <gasps> friends and told her friends to get lost. So they ran. But before that, my grandma yelled at them to get help and she punched him in the dick. Yes. Yes, grandma. She got away and went to get help, hoping he was still on the floor in pain from getting hit in the jewels. But of course, he was gone. When it hit the news that he got caught by the mob of locals, she was ecstatic. And when she saw the news that he died, she said, good, that's what he gets for doing what he did to those people. <gasps> Hope y'all like this little ditty and remember to stay safe and tell everyone to get vaccinated. Love y'all. How Thank traumatizing. You, yeah. Um... First of all, loving that the friends just booked it. Ugh. Also that. Like, get lost. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you got it. I love that the grandma was like, I've instructed them to get help since they yeah. just ran away. If my last words, like, he he had a knife to her back and said, don't speak. But she still spoke to say, "Um, while you're on your way ditching me, can you at least call the police? <laughs> hey, guys, before you head out. Oh, my goodness. I'm so glad she had the chance to punch him in his d- Also, I wonder how grandma explained that. So then I punched him in the dick. Like, I wonder right what her in phrasing the was. Dick. Right in the little Dickie Ramirez, maybe. Right in the Dickie Ramirez. Wow, what a what a crazy story. Uh, um, wow, well, thank so, you. Well, thank God it was not an actual victim. She was not an actual victim. I mean, she was a victim, but not, you know. Yes. Hope, a, as, uh, thank God it only went that far. Right, exactly. Wow. So. Yes. Christine, we are spring cleaning over at my apartment and we are getting rid of a lot of stuff, which means we're also buying a lot of new stuff and I'm (laughs) zhuzhing up my room and I'm going to get myself some new Brooklyn and sheets. Okay, that's brilliant because I, as you know, as we all know, I have Brooklyn and sheets as well. But instead of buying new Brooklyn and sheets this time, I bought a new bathrobe from Brooklyn and and it is so cozy and comfortable. Okay, I'm basically like filling my entire home with Brooklyn and (laughs) it's super, super cozy. Brooklyn and was started to create beautiful high quality home essentials that don't cost an arm and a leg and you guys it's been such a success they work directly with manufacturers to make luxury available directly to you without the luxury level markup so you can walk around in your luxurious robe and not feel bad about having spent way too much money on it feel regal in your your buttery (laughs) jams you know that's right (laughs) so give yourself the comfort refresh you deserve and get it for less at brooklyn and go to brooklyn.com and use promo code atwwd to get twenty dollars off with a minimum purchase of a hundred dollars that's b-r-o-o-k-l-i-n-e-n.com and enter promo code atwwd for twenty dollars off with a minimum purchase of a hundred dollars that's brooklyn.com promo code atwwd Skillshare is an online learning community that offers membership with meaning. With so much to explore, real projects to create, and the support of fellow creatives, Skillshare empowers you to accomplish real growth. I am so upset. I honestly tell everybody I meet to use Skillshare because I've taken so many courses on it. I feel like I've learned so much in every possible field that I want to learn anything in. The one that I like to tell people about is Productivity for Creatives. Uh, it's called Build a System That Brings Out Your Best. It's taught by Thomas Frank. And it, it's just like really empowering and it makes you feel like you are more creative, more productive. It helps you kind of build a structure that works for you as a creator. Just just take it. It's great. I'm telling you, try it, try it, do it, do it, do it. Skillshare is also incredibly affordable, especially when compared to pricey in-person classes and workshops and with everything still going on in the world. Sometimes you want to take a class inside without being around other people while we're learning to re-socialize amongst the public. Yeah, I always want to take a class alone at my house. <laughs> so that's not new for me, but it's it's actually a really great way to learn. So explore your creativity at Skillshare.com slash drink and get a free trial of premium membership that's skillshare.com slash drink okay so let's see what i have for you um oh what the heck my computer decided it's done hanging out with me today oh me too actually so i'll see (laughs) you why does everyone do this to me okay (laughs) this is from Alyssa. she her thank you Alyssa. and the subject is spooky tale to celebrate our june 4th birthdays okay Wait a minute. Hour as in the two of you, June 4th, yeah. aka I'm not included. And I. Well, uh, you, Bert, you were born on the wrong day. That's not our problem. You're right. Did you know that I was born at 12, 12 a.m.? So I was very close, actually, to having the same birthday as you. 12 minutes behind. Wow. And also, I like the, the 12, 12. I like the. Yeah. That's fun. I thought that was fun. I was very close. Very I was close. born at 1 24 p.m. So I was uh, just a little late. <laughs> <to the party. laughs> But, you know, that's what I do. Okay. (laughs) Hi, all. I've been listening to your podcast for years and have finally gotten around to sending over one of my stories, a true testament of my ability to procrastinate. See, I was late, 12, 12 a.m. 
It uh, sounds Alyssa like a June late. 4th problem. You know? <laughs> it's, I'm not even going to deny that. You're 100% right. I am a fellow Gemini, June 4th birthday gal, and was reminded by your May listener tales that next month is all of our birth months. That's correct. All of our being all the important people. Yes. Oh. It's our birth month. I feel important again. Thank you. <laughs> Good. To celebrate, I'd love to share a spooky story with you guys. I've had tons of paranormal experiences throughout my life, as one of the houses I grew up in was built on the site of town hangings when they were a thing, of course, and my Ooh. other childhood home was on a graveyard. Well, well, we have a lot in common, Alyssa. This <laughs> is sounding... I. I'm pretty sure she's about to say that she has a mom named Bernada, and like <laughs> she shares a podcast with me. Like I'm... This is actually I'm Always Crazy 444's <laughs> blog journal from 2002. Yeah. Oh my god, it's Rice Pudding 9! <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Okay. Uh, I grew up on a blah, blah, blah. Uh, our childhood home was on a graveyard with graves as old as the Revolutionary War. That being said, the story is still the one that chills me to my core. It was move-in day for my freshman year of college, and I lived on the top floor of a dorm with no elevator, no AC, and my arms felt like soggy noodles. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's M's nightmare, by the way. Yeah, I hate a no good elevator, soggy noodle. No AC. <laughs> Truly, the uh, any situation where there's no air conditioning, just sign me out. I'm, I'm no, not here. No, sign me out. And also, you have to walk up all the stairs to the top floor. Forget Get about it. Get out of town. Absolutely not. Unless there's <laughs> a million out. dollars in Elizabeth Olsen at the top of those stairs. <laughs> not a fat chance. You just got to get another cardboard cut out, put it at the top of the stairs so to motivate you. You heard it here first, first everyone. My birthday's next <laughs> week. So, <laughs> oh, Okay, so... My roommates, my two roommates and I awkwardly introduced ourselves, unpacked our stuff and fell asleep as we were all pooped from the move. I woke up in my top, I woke up in my top bunk, of course, to someone screaming as if they were royally pissed off at someone. I remember being so tired and so annoyed that one of my roommates was up and making so much noise. I looked down to see what the commotion was about and there was an old haggard woman standing in the middle of our room screaming profanities at my roommate in the bunk underneath me. Okay. Absolutely not. That, I just got goose came again. That is traumatizing. No matter what's about to happen, that mm -hmm. moment is traumatizing. Correct. As I look over the edge, the old woman stopped talking, looked up, and stared at me before continuing to shout at my sleeping roommate. <sighs> I was so tired and also so nervous that these two girls I had just met would think I'm insane for waking them up over this. Oh, wait, they were still sleeping? Oh, what? Oh, I literally just read the sentence, continuing to shout at my sleeping roommate. It didn't even phase me. I'll like... Okay, so they're not Me even either. interact. They have done nothing to cause no. the screaming. Okay, now the and they don't even notice here. it. The goose cam is here. Yes, it has arrived. I hate this. Also, <laughs> also blech, have you ever blech. had goose cam so intensely that your arms hurt when you bend them? It hurts. I was about to say, like your body actually physically hurts. Yeah. Also, the fact that this woman was screaming and they didn't notice, but then looked up at you, like notice that you were noticing her. No, thank you. Noticing well, you, noticing <laughs> me. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Uh, looked up and stared at me before continuing to shout at my sleeping roommate. I was so tired and also nervous that these two girls I had just met would think I'm insane for waking them up over this, so I just went right back to sleep. I really tried shaking this scenario off as sleep paralysis or pure exha exhaustion or being in a new space, so I decided not to bring this up to my roommate. Flash forward a couple weeks, this roommate and I become incredibly close, still are to this day. We lived in the community service wing of our dorm building, meaning once or twice a month we would volunteer around our town at nursing homes, daycares for underprivileged children, animal shelters, etc. One day our, re our resident advisor, R.A., let us know <laughs> the next opportunity would be Christmas caroling at a nursery. Nurse, it says nursery home. I'm assuming that means nursing home. Yes. Probably. Not positive, though. My roommate turned to me and was like, nope, I cannot do that. Confused, I was like, why not? That sounds like so much fun. She tells me she has always had a profound fear of old women and she has no idea why. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What? <laughs> they just really terrify her. Christine. M. When I say, I almost fainted when she told me this. This is a Gemini indeed. I can, love it. Can you imagine if she woke up and then saw the old lady yelling at her? Oh, and... And was like, well, this is the epitome of all my fears yes, in exactly. one moment. Yeah, like imagine waking up from a nightmare and then your actual fear is happening right in front. But of don't you. it don't. But that, I, I'm assuming it's her fear is because of the, that 
experience so. that she's had it before maybe i think so too but i think it'd be a double whammy if all of you wo- you woke up and she was there again your you first know? <laughs> night in the new dorm yeah, yeah. i agree like she's yeah, followed you it's... like you like you thought you'd get away from it like i'm imagining this person brought this old woman with her. yeah i yeah that's what it sounds like also i mean it must just be like subconscious at this point that you know this woman is screaming at you in your sleep but you just don't remember it i don't oh know my gosh that's so sad but also like <sighs> talk about a vivid dream like <laughs> yeah or a vivid wow. reality that you're not really paying attention to Ugh. truly can't make this shit up i had an internal struggle in that moment whether or not i should confirm to her why she may have that irrational fear okay you gotta tell her and i ended up letting her know what i had seen the night of our move-in turns out our dorm was one of two buildings oh so it was not her turned out our dorm was one of two buildings on campus that were supposedly haunted and a lot of other people had spooky encounters as well or i don't know i think this is about seven years ago and i still get chills when i think about it anyway i hope you guys have a wonderful wonderful birth month you too (laughs) Alyssa, and i'll have wine on our birthdays to celebrate christine lots of love Alyssa. wow okay so i don't know if it was she but she must have brought this lady with her right i would imagine it was like already like an energy charged space or that whatever is was attached to the roommate came with her or like she like just all of the older women spirits can like smell her just fear her and her all like, the time <laughs> yeah i don't know she's pissed them all off in some former life yeah okay this wow. one is from julia who goes who's a she her pronouns thank you for normalizing pronouns and the uh subject line is glow in the dark toe i like <laughs> half of this sentence <laughs> You love half of the sentence. I hate half of the sentence as well. (laughs) Okay. So it says, hello, M, Eva, Christine. Uh, It just says baby. So I'm thinking it meant to say baby Gio or baby G. I think it probably means my baby. Oh, right. You've got a baby now. I keep forgetting. (laughs) Uh, I think. I'm assuming. I mean, maybe not. No, you're probably right. It's so easy (laughs) to forget that you have a baby when I just don't see your belly ever, you know? Well, yeah, there's not much to see yet. I'll show it to you later. (laughs) <laughs> look every time i know you probably think about having a baby all the time now but i don't and so when so i see a baby phrase i'm like oh the dog <laughs> well i kind of thought baby g was happening as well it yeah maybe I think either one makes sense either hello m eva christine baby uh <laughs> and then it says furry pals so i've had my answer revealed to me and lemon uh another my, furry pal <laughs> another baby my name is julia and i speak uh i speak from brazil so pardon my english in brazil we have a religion called esperitismo which closely translates to spiritualism basically we are christians who also believe in an afterlife reincarnation and obviously spirits so this explanation will be needed later in the story This is so absurd, I don't even know how to say this, so I'll just spill it. One night, my dad woke up with his big toe glowing. (laughs) (laughs) It sounds like such a dad experience. Uh, I don't know how. I don't know why I was drinking It would only happen to him. It would would happen happen to you and every other dad on the planet. That's about it. It's true. At the time, I was around seven, and I slept in a small bed in the same bedroom as my parents. I woke up, and my dad was sitting on the bed, staring down at a light on his foot. (laughs) I called out to him, but he wouldn't reply. So I woke up my mom who asked him if he was feeling all right. Without a word, my dad put his leg up on the bed and his toe was glowing, like what? literally glowing as if there was a lamp inside of his flesh. The fuck? After about 10 minutes, my dad grew bored of the situation and fell back asleep. <laughs> this Again. Is M. This is M. <laughs> it really could only happen to me or a 40 year old man. It's yes. nowhere in between. <laughs> Uh, fell back asleep not too long after that his toe stopped glowing oh my gosh i don't even know how to process that i don't either what on earth now my mother is a medium she does what you guys call automatic writing we call it psychographia psychographia uh and they're like you call it a really basic term and we call it a fancy fancy word that we we can't even pronounce (laughs) we call it a word that's worth its merit um Every week she takes part of a in a reunion with other mediums in the Centro Esperita, like the church before the religion I mentioned earlier, um, where they talk to lost spirits and sometimes help pass along messages. In a reunion after the glowing toe incident, there came in a young boy who was a ghost who called himself a magician's apprentice. 
He was stuck around because he liked doing magic tricks to scare people around him. He, <laughs> I'm stuck. I just can't stop doing magic tricks. I just, the, the, the colored flags just keep coming out of my sleeve. <laughs> yeah, there's so many doves. I don't know what to do. I'll cross oh over God. when they all finally leave. <laughs> That's so sad. Um, he mentioned he got frustrated with his last magic trick because it didn't go so well and he had to make a man's toe glow, but the man didn't even care. <laughs> Stop it! What? <laughs> they, uh, let me say that again. He got. He mentioned that he got frustrated with his last magic trick when it didn't go so well because he had made a man's toe glow, but the man didn't give a shit. <laughs> what on earth? So good to know that a, a little a little boy spirit can make your body glow from the inside. Just in case you're wondering what they're. But capable just as of. a magic, like just for fun, not for any reason, not for any spiritual reason, just like. For fun. Literally Casper the Friendly Ghost just being like, look wow. what I can do. And then like you're not even caring and totally I love that that's vibe. not even. Yeah. And like <laughs> you don't even care. It's so sad. It's like, dad, come on. Also, I just feel like in real life, if you're into magic, like that's not really a trick you learn. So it's just so random that after you die, you're like, yeah, I know the ultimate trick. <laughs> this one's really going to get them, folks. Just your toe. <laughs> and then it didn't work. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I honestly, if I had done that, if I were a spirit and I made someone's toe glow and they didn't care, I'd be like, oh, okay, all five of your toes are gonna glow now. Oh, yeah, yeah, care? yeah. Oh, your foot's gonna glow now. Oh, never mind. Now that one's gonna stop and the other foot's gonna glow. Also, I mean, honestly, like, but you're that would be so offended. I'd be so <laughs> mad. I don't know any other details since my mother isn't really allowed to talk about what happens in these meetings, but it just amuses me to this day and I kind of wish it happened to me. They say mediums attract spirits, which I guess is true because many other weird things have happened in my house, but those are for another day. Thanks for the amazing podcast. Lots of love from Brazil, Julia. Holy shit. What a story. What a wow. tale. What a good story. I mean, honestly, if I were if if I were to have to go through a haunting, I would want it to be a little boy like magician wannabe who like you know made my feet glow that'd be super awesome i feel like that's like the like you can't make that shit up like it's so random it's so random it's the most random it's wild <sighs> that made me really happy i feel like that we need i i like those stories where it's it's like harmless yeah but just so strange also yeah. like i don't know like creepy but also kind of cute <laughs> i have no feelings of being threatened at the same time yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 exactly glow in the dark toe i mean that really is an end story i feel like that would happen to you i'm shocked it hasn't <laughs> honestly it might now honestly maybe that boy in the other dimension was like okay finally an audience member who will appreciate my trick yeah if that's as bad as it's gonna get if that's as intense as the haunt thing's gonna be haunt me like it's come better on. than a polter grope right yeah. like oh definitely well. and i've been there have a glow toe, you know? <laughs> okay. All right. So this is our bonus story. And this is from our our pal, Shady Sadie, who oh clearly has some fun Shady Sadie stuff going has made on. quite a mark on us because uh, this is like their third time writing in. I think so. That's That seems to be correct, yes. But apparently, like, Eva has read the stories not knowing who they were from all three times, and they were always Shady Sadie, so that's kind <gasps> of odd. And also, Shady Sadie has sent us some really wonderful gifts in the past. Yeah, um, Shady Sadie, you were a, a gem and a half. You were on top of it, and, the, and that's why we're drinking. So. And we're not trying to insinuate, oh, you're writing all these stories and they're not, they're like too, like they're, they're, they're true stories, I'm assuming. They're just like, you must have an interesting life is what I'm trying to say. You must really uh, have run the gamut in another world. So. Yeah. Yeah. In this one too. In this one as well. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I like Here how Jun Junie looks like he's holding off for dear fucking life. Junie literally just grabbed <laughs> the <middle. laughs> What's he's, he doing? He said, buckle up for Shady Sadie. <laughs> he's like, not again. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Shady Sadie. She heard. Thank you, Sadie. Subject I'm not a serial killer and back to the future food share. Okay. I thought that might get your attention. It, it did. Happy birthday to Em and Christine and Alyssa. So <laughs> since it is a very special episode, I wanted to tell you a story that is not true crime or paranormal, but I think M would really appreciate, oh. though it does involve a true crime and paranormal movie, so I guess it kind of counts. Back when I was in college, a horror movie called I'm Not a Serial Killer was being shot in my town. It's so comforting when a movie industry thinks we need a small town that looks like it would produce a troubled teen, teen with homicidal tendencies, and then they visit your town and say, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do. <laughs> this is exactly what we were looking for. 
Anyways, in a town of roughly 8,000 people, something like a movie being filmed is a fairly big deal. Mm -hmm. Maybe in LA, they can block off entire streets for filming, but when that's the only street you can take to get to your apartment, it gets pretty annoying, particularly when it happens several days in a row. Uh Even in LA, it gets particularly annoying. I wouldn't wear it. Quick. extremely annoying um it's and also like it at least there was some flair of like it being in your small town yeah, like but, hollywood like, oh in, right right true but in la it's like ugh, this happens every not, week. like and it's like a commercial it's not even like oh they're filming a horror movie it's like they're filming another like remember all the state honda, commercial remember the honda commercial yes! they filmed on the, the house next to you on my street and they like put fake snow and we were like what is going on they like had a huge snow machine it was crazy i, I couldn't park that. for two whole recording sessions i had to walk all the way to christine's house it was terrible you had to like park on my lawn actually you <laughs> should have parked on my lawn you had to park far away that was awful <laughs> they'll tow your car okay this is not about complaining i'm sorry but it is annoying we feel you is what we're trying to say mm-hmm. So one day I was headed home when one of the cursed roadblocks popped up and I got stranded on the opposite side of town from my bed. (laughs) That's a nightmare. That's a nightmare. At least Em got stranded from me, not from from their bed. That would have been so much worse. You'd still be hearing about it. (laughs) Em would never have stopped. Thoroughly annoyed, I parked and went to a bar to wait it out. Fair point. I sat down next to a very kind elderly man and ordered some fries and a drink, then proceeded to bitch. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, and she says, it's the Midwest. Bitching to strangers at bars is one of our regional hobbies. Ooh. Can confirm. That BRB. is absolutely Moving correct. to the Midwest. Okay. It's a good time. Uh, the man was a very good sport about it. We spoke for about half an hour. I shared my fries with him. <laughs> Sorry. I love Shady Sadie. Gosh, thinking about the pre-COVID world where I just casually shared food with a random guy at a bar is weird. <laughs> <laughs> Put your hands on my food, please. Here, please. eat it. <laughs> He admitted he was in town for the movie, and I apologized for complaining about it. He laughed and said it was okay. We talked about a few other things, then the filming on the street wrapped up, and both of us... Wait, so he's there for the movie, and he's waiting for the filming? He's hiding out in a bar, eating french fries, oh my like, gosh. waiting for May- it to end? Maybe he just wasn't in the scene and had to duck out somewhere. Okay, fair. I have an idea that he's, like, the director, and he's just hiding from everybody, but that's probably know. not true. The filming on the street wrapped up. Both of us got up to leave. He paid for my drink and fries for me, and I asked him what part of town he was playing. Nope, that's not what it says. And I asked him what part he was playing Uh. before he left, and he replied, Mr. Crowley. Ew, that sounds creepy. I don't even know what it is. (laughs) Assuming that it was just a small extra bit, I said, cool. (laughs) Then the movie came out, and a group of us went to watch it together. I realized that Mr. Crowley was one of the main characters. Oh. Ah, cool i thought i ate fries with one of the main characters then the credits rolled and i read the actor's name mr crowley was pr- played by christopher lloyd oh my the god man <laughs> who paid for my fries was doc brown <laughs> when i tell you i would have vomited out of excitement like and i would have had the he would know me as the worst fan experience of his life because i would have collapsed to the ground <laughs> And you would not have, you don't share your food. That would not, that part would I would have, have been happened. like, take the goddamn restaurant. I'll pay, <laughs> I'll buy one of everything, whatever you want. Wow. I love that Shitty Say's like, oh, cool. <laughs> I hate this movie that's playing. Like, I hate it so much. <laughs> this movie is eh, I guess. But also doc, Dr. Emmett Brown is literally uh, eating fries with me. I just want to go to my bed. Oh, my God. I love that he had to admit he was there for the movie. This is amazing. I don't know how I didn't see that. I somehow didn't see that coming. Yeah, we heard Back to the Future earlier, and I completely forgot it. You said French totally. fries, and I just went in the other direction. Totally forgot. I'm like, he's the director of the film. Like, I don't know where I'm making shit like that up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Crowley was played by Christopher Lloyd. The old man who paid for my fries was Doc Brown. That's it. That's the end of that story. Like I said, no heebies or jeebies, but I figured M would get a kick out of it. Happy I did. birthday to Yes, I did too. Happy birthday to M and Christine and Eva. Thank you for for always reading our stories. Team cheap beer and crappy fries. Shady Sadie. I'm telling you, Sadie has just like such a fascinating array of that also checks stories. out now because i was like shady sadie has already written in with a different true crime and a different paranormal story and now like I, or i'm pretty sure those were the two stories but also like i was like is there more but that makes sense that it has nothing to do with true crime or paranormal. it's just like a wild fun fact that's also tangential to our podcast wow yes. what a cool anecdote though like that is the ultimate anecdote like what party a fun, story i don't i've never i've only met leah thompson from back to the future but that was it but she was very lovely wow and i i didn't meet her like organically i met her at a back to the future like convention so oh oh, oh. 
it it was kind of expected I'd run into somebody, but I've never gone to like accidentally eat fries with Marty <sighs> McFly. Are you kidding me? I would lose. I my mean, mind. you would have known who it was. That's the wild part is that she just didn't even know. Who it was. I wouldn't have known either. Like, yeah, like, I wouldn't have been able to keep a like a right. normal conversation going. I would have been. You would like, have projectile vomited all over. I've been like, so anyway, what do you do? Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Oh uh, wow, what a story. Well, that is a very exciting array of tales for our birthday month listener stories. Aww. Thank you, everybody, and uh, our official birthday. Or isn't even yet so i think we're not in the birthday spirit yet because we've right. got over a week until either of us turn anything we're You're still in ge- our we're 20s gearing up. we're still in our 20s we're still in our 20s <laughs> so close and uh so next week when we when the the new episode comes out or i guess whenever the next episode comes out i forget the days but we will talk about our birthdays prob- probably a lot more in the next couple. <laughs> They're like, oh, episodes. thank God, there's more. <laughs> this is just a taste. <laughs> you kn- by now you know how I this know. goes. So if you You're hate totally it, right. just come back in like four episodes. You know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we were and we kidding. That's why we drink. Happy birthday! It's your birthday. Happy, happy birthday.